biggest crime in the history of the world to kill six million Jews, of them uh, close to two million children, only for one reason, because they were Jewish. You know, I am actually a Holocaust survivor. I lost my parents, I lost my family. So for me and other people like me, that's an obsession to teach young people, because pretty soon there'll be no Holocaust survivors. A people was supposed to be wiped out, was going to be wiped out, many were, and we are going to make sure that we commemorate it. Finally, we have something in Los Angeles what I can dedicate in the memory of all my family and plus all of those who have been lost in the Holocaust. The people who didn't survive can be remembered and something can be learned from their horrible death. The Museum of the Holocaust began about 45 years ago when a group of survivors taking an English as a second language course at Hollywood High serendipitously met each other, got to talking, and discovered they all had objects or documents or some artifact from their lives before or during the war. And they wanted to preserve these. And perhaps even more importantly, they wanted to create an opportunity to commemorate their loved ones, the people who were not able to survive. The uniqueness is that it was organized by survivors and that it was the very first Holocaust Museum in the United States. Every single day we're working to commemorate the memories of those who were killed and we're working to teach future generations about what happened between 1933 and 1945. The emphasis on people learning themselves in this museum is very important. So we have a terrific collection of unique artifacts, things that have been donated by survivors over the 45, almost 50 year history of the museum that we present in context. And then the visitor is able to walk through and learn about those, see the artifacts, read about them. Each person, whether you know nothing or you know quite a bit, can get something out of the experience. Being free is perhaps one of the most important values and even assets of the museum. We're able to make sure that anybody who wants to learn about the Holocaust can do so. We have school groups, a tremendous number of kids each year, about 10,000, that come through with their classes. They participate in a survivor conversation where the survivor tells them about his or her life experience. And then they are treated to a docent-led tour through the museum where they're able to put into context the life that they've just heard with the history that so dramatically and tragically impacted that life. And this is where we were hiding for nine months. I was 14 and a half when the war ended. To meet someone who's really gone through that experience, it makes it very real for them. It makes it possible for them to relate to this person because that it's a person just like them. Obviously it's more impacting when you get to see, um, see all these pictures and um, get to talk with someone who lived through it. It makes it so much more real as opposed to just being um, in a book. I, I try to uh, explain to them from a child's point of view, I was myself a child when I was uh, incarcerated and uh, I lost a 14-year-old sister in Auschwitz. So I, I try to make them understand what a genocide or a holocaust is. You come to a place like this and not only do you see pictures, but then hearing it from somebody that, that knows that their family might be in that picture. It's amazing that, that this could ever happen and we need to do everything that we can to, to make sure it never, never happens again. I feel that if I touched only one student teaching them that they shouldn't ever hate anybody 
and they should be tolerant towards each other, then I feel like I, I done my duty. We're one of the only institutions that endeavors to tell the story of history through the objects themselves. It's not only presents exhibits which you can see in the museum halls, but it also has hundreds of probably thousands of unique documents, artifacts, photographs, which are stored and cataloged with our archives. I get calls every day of people who have uh, had a relative that's died and they're going through their things and they found a letter, a photograph, uh, something from the war and they want to donate it to us. Good morning, Los Angeles Museum of the Holocaust. The archives are available to virtually anybody who's interested and calls up with a reasonable request. It's also critical that we make the archives available to scholars, to teachers, to educators in virtually any form, and to members of the media, documentarians, journalists looking to understand more about the Holocaust. I can't think of any better time in the 45-year history of the Los Angeles Museum of the Holocaust than now. Building a permanent home for the Los Angeles Museum of the Holocaust is the culmination of a probably decades-long dream. I think people are really excited about the new building. They're really excited about the design of this building, that it's in a public park. It's right across from the Grove. It's going to be an important cultural institution and destination in the city of Los Angeles. We'll have an opportunity, just by location, to reach out to a vast number of people we might not have been able to reach before. My biggest happiness is that we are going to have our own new museum. The Holocaust Museum is the most important to learn for students and should never, never be forgotten. I don't think we can talk about the museum, its past, its present, its incredibly bright future, without saying thank you. Thank you to those who aren't with us today who started the museum. Thank you to those who are with us today for everything you've done to bring the museum to this point. And thank you to those who aren't with us today but who will be with us tomorrow and next year and in 10 years for your work in helping sustain the museum. The Holocaust is the most horrific thing that has ever happened in human history. And it benefits the community of Los Angeles to have a museum where people can come in and learn about the Holocaust, not only learn about it, but see original artifacts from that time, and then hear survivors tell them stories of what happened to them and their families. And this not only is, is good for the, the survivors and the Jewish community, it's good for the overall community. I keep asking myself practically every day, why me? Why, you know, six million were murdered, why not me? And somehow I keep hoping that maybe the work I do today is the reason why I survived. I've been taught that you don't teach, you touch. And I think this is a museum. We don't so much teach, as we touch.